permit and say this one word. Say neighbor. I am overwhelmed. I am overwhelmed. Oh my God, just look down your road. Look at somebody said, I'm overwhelmed. Oh, and you may be seated in this house this morning. Amen. We want to talk or teach, preach from the thought process this morning. Overwhelmed. My, my. How many realize it seemed to be necessary in the time that we live again? It's so pertinent in this time that we're dealing with. We're dealing with a time that they seem like if it ain't one thing, it's another thing and another thing. We seem to be, we're overwhelmed. As I look at the text this morning uh, from Psalm, Psalm 61, how many know the 61st Psalm? Oh my God, this Psalm would have fit many occasions in David's life. Yes, it would. He was distraught from fighting in numerous, in numerous enemies. How I many know he was surrounded by enemies? It seemed like he always had to fight. My God. How I many know he had to fight because he was gifted and anointed of God? How I many know he, he offers petition in this song? He expression of his trust in God. Ooh, he prays for prolongation of his kingship. That I know I am on God's side. He offered up a vow of thanksgiving to be delivered. And how many know that God answers in this song? As I begin to deal with the text today, Brother Tony, it says overwhelmed. My God. If I believe if everyone in this house was really honest with themselves, they can all say this year and the last couple of years that we have been in, if we have been a feeling of overwhelmed. My God, what does it mean to be overwhelmed? Overwhelmed means to be affected very strongly, to be or feel upset. How many have been there? Just seem like, seem like when you go get a breakthrough, something else always pops up. Mm -hmm. To be overwhelmed also means to be devastated. My God in here, and to feel oppressed. Mm -hmm. How many know just something all the time is another concern, it's another worry, it's another stress level that keeps on happening. And it seems to have us being overwhelmed. So in our hearts, in our minds, we can get completely overwhelmed. Why? Because it seems that every time we turn around, something else is happening. Whether it's our finances, sickness, jobs, family, friends, etc., etc., etc. Whatever it may be, it can leave you in a melancholy state. Oh my God, and a feeling of completely overwhelmed. My God. Before I go a little further in this text, let's talk about Brother David. Oh my God. David and why his heart is overwhelmed. David is overwhelmed because he's on the run. And his, he's hiding from King Saul. Someone who he considered to be a friend and not an enemy. My God. We should be careful about who we call friend. Because everybody is your friend if you're not doing anything in your life. But once God starts moving and doing great things for you, then your so-called friends will become jealous and envy of you. Oh my God. Why is that, Pastor? Because something is lacking within them. And in their lives, so now they are hating on you. My God. This caught David completely off guard. How I many know you expected it from an enemy, not a friend? You expected love and support from your family and loved ones. You know, when you're doing something good, you want to have a boy every once in a while. Keep on doing the good work. But sometimes you got to speak a word over your own self. Uh, my, my, my. He called him off God because you expect, you know how it is, you want everybody to be happy for you in your happiness. But instead of being happy for you, they turn on your brother cut and they begin to find weaknesses in you and try to bring you down. But if God be for me, nobody can mess with us. And I'm talking here. We should be careful about who we call friends because everybody is your friend as long as everything is going well. How many know it calls something lacking in them? This called David completely off guard because he was faithful to God. Oh my God, and faithful to the service of Saul. When you are faithful and still, you're getting it. 
Oh my God in here. But how many know what you got to go through to come out? Can I teach in here? David was taken by this and left feeling of being where? Overwhelmed. Because someone who he had dined with, had fought wars with, is now trying to kill him. My God. Why was Saul trying to kill David? Oh my God. Because there was an anointing on David. And Saul got jealous and feared David was a threat to Saul. How many realize because of your anointing, it attracts, oh my God, persecution. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can I talk on this side? Because of the anointing that's in your life, it attracts, oh my God, persecution. Oh my God, but persecution comes with blessing. And blessings come with persecution. Because the more you go through it, the more anointed you are, the more crushed you are, the greater the blessing that God has for you. Can I teach in hell? I got my nephew Will on the front row. We're going to preach it here. Look at him. He, he was maybe coming jealous because of the thing that's in you. How I many know some people can't travel with you? Can I get some help in here? Some people won't be able to, to travel with you because what God has in store for you, how many know, is in the next room? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my, my, my. How many know, my God in here, it's more things. People try to block things, but how many know, we can spit the thing that be not as though there were. And how many know, when God is guiding your footsteps, nothing can stop you. But how many know, but it's a mind matter. You got to understand that I am in the will of God. And being in the will of God, that nothing can hinder you or stop you. Right. Meaning you come this morning with a feeling of being overwhelmed. See, the devil is trying to kill you because he knows that God has purpose and plan on your life. And the devil wants to take you out because if he doesn't, you're going to do damage to his kingdom. And if he lets you loose, oh my God, somebody else will be where you be and going to be saved. Oh my God, because God saved you so others be saved. Yeah. My God in here. So he says in here, the devil knows his end. He know he's going to burn in the lake that burning with fire and yes, yes. forever and ever and ever and ever. How many know the devil know that he has opportunity in heaven, yes. but he got lifted up in himself. Yes. And how many realize he persuasive? He took a third of the angels with him. Yes. Now, because he can't do nothing with God, he gets the thing that looks just like God. Yes. Then how many of you look at your neighbor and neighbor? The devil don't like you. And you want to know why? Because you look just like your dad. I thought I had some devil on the inside. How many realize because the devil is in with you? Because, see, every time he sees you, you remind him of God. And because I can't do nothing with God, and he really can't do nothing with you without permission. He really have to go and ask God, God, can I go over to the Grant's house? And can I do something to him? God said, yeah, go on over to the Grant's house, but this is what you can do. This is your, your restriction. You restricted him to test you can test. You can only test what I allow you to test. And in the light of the test, I'm setting you up to be blessed. Because blessings come with persecution. And persecution comes with blessing. Ah, oh my God in here. So he goes on, the devil's going to burn forever. So he's trying to drag and take as many people he can with him. Right. How wild. People like to go where they're not invited. Right. The devil wants you to go to hell with him because he knows he can't go to heaven. Yeah. Oh my, my, he wants to kill you because you are a threat. Yeah. Hallelujah. The devil ain't messing with half saved folks. Right. No. There's no such thing as half saved. But he calls, he's already got them. But for you to say, for God I live. Yeah. And for God I die. Yeah. For you both, folks. Ain't got no process in the house. I'll go boil water and put a pot on the on the skillet and on the on the stove and start boiling because they're gone will make a way. And after a while, somebody will knock and bring you some food. Devil got issue with you. You said, baby, I'm sick, but I'm holding on. See the swim, live or die, I'm going all the way. How many got a testimony? Oh my God said, no matter what I live, no matter what I die. For me to live is Christ. And for me to die is gain. Now, devil, what you gonna do with that? If you kill me, I'm in the arms of Jesus. And oh my God, if I can raise up from here, I got a testimony that I am a living testimony. Shut up and dead and gone, but I said, 
I ain't gonna, I'm gonna preach by myself up in here. Right. So look at here. One of his biggest tactics is trying to get your focus off God and on your problems. Amen. You need to start telling your problems how big your God is. Yeah. And stop telling your God how big your problem is. Yeah. Oh my God, he knows that if he can bombard you, how many know he's attacking your mind? He can bombard you with things. He has a chance to take you out. When you're worried about everything except what you need to be worried about. How many of the devil has an opportunity to take you out? But when your mind is stayed on Jesus. Woo! When you have a little talk with Jesus. And you tell him all about my problem. How many know that he will answer prayer? If he will, won't he do it? Oh, I'm going that way. But he goes on to, in here. And when your mind is not on God, you're going to worry. How many people have been worrying the last week or two? Uh, you can't play with me. I feel you. Maybe you're on Facebook. How many of you have been worrying? Hallelujah. You're worried about things. Oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. When your mind is not on God, your faith is going to get weak. Because you're not praying as you ought to. When your mind is not on God, that peace that passes all understanding won't help you. When your mind is not on God, you're going to be troubled. Especially when the people who are causing you problems are the one that should be helping you. The people that cause it, the issue are the people that you live with. Oh, my, my, my. Are the people that you work with. Supposed to be your your animal, boy, your boy. Oh my, my God, supposed to be your A spoon too. That's old school for y'all. How you know? It's supposed to be my boy. You supposed to have my back. You supposed to be with me. But it's your friend, enemies, to the one that's yeah, right. They got on teaching here. You want to know why people are, are being overwhelmed? Yeah. They don't know when the next layoff is coming. Uh -huh. They don't know when the next outbreak of the COVID virus is coming. Yeah. They don't know when they're going to start shutting things down or, or my children safe or my family safe or we're going to be able to stay in our home to stay in places. But the little short man stop out and tell you today that God is a very present here in a time of trouble. Let me teach on in here. I'm trying to be good today. See, the devil knows you're not going to be affected by your enemies because your guards is already up. You know the people in your life doesn't like you. So you don't run with them. You have a long have a spoon mentality. That means you wave at them. How y'all doing over there? And you keep it moving. Yeah. How many know there are no threat for the cut to get in your house because you're not allowing them in your house? No way. But the very one that says you're a friend. How many realize I know a man who had a friend? Well, my, my, my. And he ended up a friend. Yep, hurry. There's a whole lot of folks in the penal system right now because they had a friend. Yeah. But I heard an old Baptist hymn say, what a friend we have in Jesus. And all I sin and grief he had. And how many know I'm privileged? I can take everything to God in prayer. I'm almost there. My God in here. That doesn't bother you because your God is up. Oh my God. You're not worried about them. No. Oh my God, because they ain't getting in no way. But when it comes from someone you love, it overwhelms you deeply. Yeah. Have you ever been hurt in here? Yeah. Anybody who had confidence hurt you. Yeah. Anybody you love hurt you. Yeah. I ain't got no real folks talking to me. Yeah. When all things are happening in your life, it can cause your world to feel like it's in chaos. Yeah. Your circumstance can overwhelm you. So to where you feel like getting in a car, yeah. driving, and never looking back. Yeah. I'm going to talk on this side. I'm yeah. because, you know, y'all ain't never had that situation. But how many of sometimes you want to pack your bags? Yeah. Oh, my God. Pack it up in a car. Get up in a car and just take off and drive away. Said, I'm not looking back. Yeah. Oh, my, my, because I've been overwhelmed. Yeah. When you're good, ain't good enough. When you keep trying to satisfy something. Yeah. But how many know but the anointing that God has on your life yeah. won't fit everywhere? Yeah. Can I teach in here? Yeah. My God in here, because it would be so much easier to run away from your problems. Yeah. 
stand up to deal with him and stand and face him. How many know we have running mentalities? When it get hard, we're ready to quit and take our running. But I stopped by to tell you, David stayed on mine. So the Bible tells me in his song, David called out to God in prayer. He knows that the only way he can rest and find safety is in the rock of salvation. Say yeah in him. Even though David is without strength. Yes he is. That his God, he knows that his God is a rock. How many know him as a rock? He's above everything. So David is saying, he realized, oh yeah, when my heart is overwhelmed, I got somebody I can go to. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. And David said, God alone is a strong top in the face of the enemy. Therefore, David wanted to remain in his presence. When trouble is all around you, I'm seeking for the presence of God. I need in your presence. How many know they cover me from the enemy? Say yeah in here. How many know that God is like a mother here, providing refuge and shelter under his wings? Say yeah in here. He said the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are saying, say yeah, it is. How many know him as a strong tower? How many know him as everything you need? So David said, I've been crying all night long. I've been in trouble. Anybody reminded of an old song? Trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. Say 
my help. I'm in it on the hill. It's the forest. I can see it with a natural eye. But the hill is not my help. But there is something above the hill. I may know he's in it. The looking up. Look up and live. Look down, you got to die. Because God 